Hello, Digital Communications. Um, I just wanted to see how quickly I could do a review video about how to do moving photos. Um, we did cover this two weeks ago, but it's been a while, and uh, we're just going to wrap this up today. So I wanted to make sure there was a video there that showed us how to do it that was rather succinct. So um, here's what we're doing, right? We, we've already started this idea, but um, you're making um, the Ken Burns effect, is what some people like to call it, but you're doing this manually and um, you're learning how to make photos move. Not only just zoom in or zoom out and crossfade, but you're also learning how to make them rotate, and you're also learning how to make them get warped or how to get cropped or to how to slide across the screen. So there's lots of different ways you can make photos, or video for that matter, um, move across the screen. And that's what we're gonna be practicing today with just a simple slideshow. So uh, if you didn't, Grab it from the pickup drive. Please grab the folder off of Digicom Pickup called MA Photo Demo. I'm just going to plop it right in there. Oop, it's already there. I'm going to replace it. So it's right up top. And it has a new file on the The music file now works. Now the problem with um, dealing with photos straight off the bat and you, is you can't use that cheat that I've shown you before. So I'm going to start with a fresh sequence new sequence here and normally I tell you just to hit OK or I'll change the name and I'll call it uh, photo demo 2 right and normally I tell you use the cheat where it lets you just kind of drop in any video and it changes that so notice it's still in standard definition uh, and then when I find that folder yes my desktop is a mess when I find that folder right um, if I drag this photo in it doesn't prompt me to do, it doesn't prompt me because it's a photograph and so you'll also notice that this picture is way too big or the resolution is way too high for the standard definition. so I'm only seeing this guy's elbow where in reality I should be really seeing his whole face right um, and the rest of the kids running and everything so what do I need to do here what I need to do is I need to change the settings on my sequence I can either do that right when I started my new sequence so if you're still on the file new sequence place I can go down here to settings if I've already made one I'm just gonna get rid of this picture I don't have to but I could uh, I can go to sequence sequence settings and the settings you need to change are listed right here I'm gonna try and leave this up for a while um, but you got to go to editing mode and go all the way up to the top and choose custom so make sure if you can't if you're having trouble finding custom it's because it's at the top okay uh, then you're gonna go to your time frames and you're gonna choose 59.94 I know it's essentially 60, but it's slightly different, I know. Uh, and then for your frame size, you're going to choose 1920 by 1080. That's what we broadcast in. Or that's what we streamcast in. 1920 by 1080. Um, and then you want your pixel aspect ratio square, and you want your fields as progressive. So pixel aspect ratio square, and you want progressive, which means it's going to be analyzed. And everything else should have changed as I was doing everything else oops just checking yep um, everything else should be good now the problem with editing photos is some photos aren't oriented for 1920 by 1080 for that aspect ratio some photos are shot vertically right like this one so if I throw this in here I still have the problem of it's still a too big and then when I shrink it it's still gonna have these columns that you're gonna see so what I want you to do is just grab your five or six photos that you want to have in there all right yeah let's do that one and I'm just gonna just kind of make a sequence here sure I'll do the bear why not the bear, I'm going to have, have a plan for the bear, and I'll just do one more. Let's do, I need, I need a group picture. I'll do the choir. I'll do the choir. Yeah. All right. So I have my six photos. I'm going to put them in the order I want. Um, and the first thing you're going to do is, you'll notice that it's going to be hard to see some of the pictures. They're going to be way too zoomed in or way too zoomed out, depending on the quality of the picture. And we're going to fix all that. We're also going to learn how to animate all that. Okay. So, this one's too zoomed in, too zoomed in, too zoomed in, too... Oh, that one actually is too small. 
Um, and we're going to have to readjust these sizes. The other thing I want you to do is I want you to stack your photos so that one, every other one is on top, like so. Now there's going to be a reason for this later um, that you're going to see why in a second. But we'll, we'll just stack them right now. And then the other thing I want you to do is I want you to overlap them. So I'm just going to zoom in here real quick. And I want you to kind of pull them so they're kind of overlapping one another. This is going to help create um, an easier effect later uh, that you want to have. So just, just do it right now and have faith that it'll, it'll work out later. And then these two guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something special with, but I'll just, I'll, for the sake of making it, so you, they're all overlapped. Okay. Now, with my arrow here, pull that over. So we notice this is too zoomed in from the original picture. So how do I change that? So the way, the easiest way to change that is I'm gonna double click on my picture right here. It brings it up into my preview window, and I can go to Effect Controls. So once again, I double click, I make sure that's white. I make sure that I, I can see it with the, the scrubbers over it. Double click it, it's white. I can click effect controls. And over here I have position and scale. So I can just decrease the scale, that's the size of it, until it fits where I want it to be. Something like that. Now there's a lot of extra space there and maybe I wanna see more of the choir and less of Mr. Mayor. I can also change its position to kind of get it so that I can, you know, just change its location. So I could go through and resize every single one. So going through this one, if I wanted to resize it so it fits, I have all this extra blank space. But since the picture's rather long, I can probably stretch it out to something like this, and I can change its position. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm clicking and holding on these blue numbers here. I could type them in, if I just click on it, I can type in a number, but the easiest thing is to left click and hold and adjust. All right, so this one needs to scale out, so like that. This one needs to get bigger, so that it fits. And lastly, way too big for this guy. Make sure, notice I was still on this one, even though my scrubber is over on the science one, it still says 137, but I know it's not true you got to make sure that each one is white or selected. So I'm going to go plop that down here like this. And lastly, the bear. Something like, yeah. I'm going to do something different with those, those last two I'm going to really mess around with. All right. Now, we want to have these guys move around screen. So if I were just to play this, right, I can have some voiceover. I can have some music on this. Um, but it's not dynamic, it's just a static image. To really kind of help this, um, because it's video, um, we can make these things move. Before I do anything else, the top line here, you might notice that the second I get to where the bear logo is on top of the choir, I only see the bear logo. Well, I see a fraction of the choir, right? Um, we're gonna hide that right now. You can do that by clicking on the eyeball. We'll come back to those, all right? So this guy right here, I'm just going to make it, I'm going to make it slowly zoom out. So I want to start with it a little bit more zoomed in. So I'm going to have it kind of zoomed right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by scaling it more again, and then changing its position. It's the vertical. And I just want to see a big swarm of faces. So it's like almost all faces. Oh, too far. Like... There, All right? So now we can see everyone. Now, here's the important part. I make sure that my scrubber is at the very first frame. I can either do that by left clicking, I'm on snap, or I can use the up and the down arrow and that helps skip to where I wanna be, All right? That takes me to the very end of that clip, the very beginning of that clip. So I hit the up arrow, down arrow. I know I'm on the very first frame. Then I'm gonna click on the stopwatch here, stopwatch stopwatch and it made this thing called a keyframe these little dots here on this timeline are saying at this point in time at this point on my on my timeline for this picture i want it to have these parameters right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to move my scrubber all the way down to the end that last frame that very very last frame and now notice 
I have a dot at the beginning where my scrubber was. Now when I make a change on my scale right here, it'll make a new dot. So if I pull back, oops, yeah, if I pull back, it's going to create another dot, this dot right here. You guys see that? All right? Now I guess I have to change the position. So this dot right here is going to be made the second I change anything here. So I'm going to move it up. And I'm going to move it over so I can kind of just see the whole choir like that. Now, what happens is, is it winds up animating it. So it slowly zooms out. So that was called a zoom out, right? We can do the same thing here with a zoom in. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to go to that first frame using my up and down arrows, left and right arrows. Make sure I'm on that very, very first frame. Make sure I click on it so that it's white. I get this set up to where I want it. So I want this to zoom in for a close up on his face. So I'm gonna go to scale here. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. And now I'm going to hit stopwatch, scale, position. And now I'm going to go to the very last frame of this picture. And now I'm going to zoom in and position it so that it's still Focusing on him. Something like that. Trying to follow the rule of thirds and everything. And there we go. All right. Let's see. Let's go to the top layer. I'll deal with these last two. I'm going to deal with these last two at the end because we're going to do cropping and that's going to be different. Um, so let's go to the top layer. So I originally hit it with that eyeball. I'm going to unhide it. Now, the up and down only is... is is being affected by this first track. If I want up and down to detect the second layer, I have to click on this V2 right here. And so now I'm gonna do something different. Now I'm gonna want strength and diversity. Instead of doing a scale, um, well, I'll have it scale as well, but I'm also going to have it rotate. So a rotation is another fun thing that we can play with. So this is my first frame, I'm going to have it start really, really, really small. Whoop, not that small. Undo. One more. I'm going to have it start at about 12%. There you go. I know what happens. I made it so small it disappeared off the thing. And then I want to get this centered, though. Even though it's a rectangle, I can crop it later. All right. Now, um... The other thing I can do is I can keyframe its rotation. So right here, I'm going to hit the stopwatch for position, scale, and rotation this time. And now I'm going to go to right before this choir disappears, right about here. And I'm going to give it, left click on that rotation number, one, two, three spins. So it's kind of like Batman, something like that little Batman newspaper type thing. And now I'm going to zoom it in as well. And I'm going to have to position it so that it's right in the middle. So I have it zoom in. So now it quickly spins in like that. So notice it made a set of keyframes at that first set. And then it made a second set of keyframes. Not at the end, but where my scrubber was right here. So now I'm going to move my scrubber down to where this next picture starts to come in, and I'm gonna have it slowly zoom out, just a little bit. Just a little slow zoom, just a little bit. And position up or down, just a little bit. Uh, just to kind of give it some movement uh, while it's at, so it's just a slow zoom. And then at the very last frame, I'm gonna have it spin out again. So right here, I'm gonna have this go down, way down again to 12. And I'm going to spin it the other way, the other way, as it disappears, maybe even more. Um, now, if you don't like that, it's not spinning around the center. That's the anchor point. I'm not going to get into that for this lecture. Um, but I, I just, just to kind of point out, you can change exactly where it's rotating. That thing is called the anchor point. So now it, so it spins in, up, oh, and it keeps spinning as it's going on because I forgot to set a keyframe here. 
Whoopsie daisy. So I'm going to hit undo until that rotation keyframe goes away. Maybe one more. And so what I forgot to do was have a, a, a keyframe set here where it's not changing. So at rotation here, I'm going to add a keyframe. So all I'm going to do is I'm not going to rotate it. I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to add a keyframe. So now from here to here, it's going to hold its rotation. And then I can spin it out at the end. I'm going to take this and spin it back. And I'll scale it way down. And I'll just change this position so it stays centered. And again, if you want to spin more around the center of the logo, you're going to be playing with anchor point. But I'm not going to be messing with that for this lesson. I want to try to keep it focused. All right, so now I've done rotation. And I've done zoom. So what I want you guys to try and do is I want you to try and do something a little different. Like so for this pride picture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with, I'm going to zoom it in a little bit more so it fills up the whole screen. Like so. And so instead of doing a zoom or zoom out or zoom in, I'm just going to have it kind of slide across the whole screen. So at my very first frame, I'm going to slide it over to my right. Like this. And I'm going to keyframe it. Stopwatch. Then I'm going to go to the very, 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 very end of that picture. Right about there. And now I'm going to keyframe it so it comes across like so. So it's not, um, it's not zooming in or zooming out. It's just kind of sliding across the field. And notice it made its other keyframe error. I'm not going to do anything else to it. Now, when you go back and you hit play, you might be noticing you're not seeing anything, even though the timeline's changing or it's stuttering. What happens when you do a lot of work on Premiere is you're going to have to render it. So you're going to go up here to Sequence, and you're going to choose Render. If you have an in and out point here, you might want to clear it, but I'm just going to choose Render in and out. And this is going to take a second. So I'm going to hit render in and out, and then I'm actually going to be able to see everything and how it works in real time. Render in and out, and this is going to go. What's up? And through the power of movie editing, it's all rendered. Um, when it's all done rendering, it's going to be green up here rather than yellow. Um, when it's red, it really wants you to render. Um, so it gives you that whole stoplight code. Um, but now if I play it in real time, this looks wonderful. The one other thing I wanted to show you was cropping. Now cropping, for some reason, doesn't count as position or scale or anchor. Cropping wants to be its own filter. So you have to go to a slightly different place to crop stuff. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna set these up a little bit so they're side by side. I'm gonna pull this image on top. I'm gonna pull this image on top. So that gives me four tracks now. Now I have two images right on top of one another. I'm gonna move one to the left. Yeah, and I'm gonna move the other one to the right, and cropping is different than zoom. I'm gonna have to zoom this one in more. Whoop, a little too much, I'll be good. And then this one I'll zoom in more too. Uh, zoom in a little bit. There you go. Actually, I wanna change sides because this guy has his hand up. There you go. This is the sort of stuff you wanna think about. And I wanna change, I want the bear on top of the scientist, so I'll be like here. Not the scientist, the science student. And then I'm going to slide him over to the left. Yes, that's what I want. All right. Uh, now with cropping, cropping is an effect. So I have to go to the effects tab over here in my media browser. And I could un look under video effects, and it's going to be under image. But if you can't find it, just remember the word crop. Search for crop. And it shows up, it's under the folder transform, not image, sorry. And I'm going to drop the crop filter on top of one of my pictures, and I'm going to drop it on top of the second picture. So I'm going to have two crop filters, one on each. And now when I click on that first image, which is the science student, I have position and scale, but now down below I have crop for top, left, right, bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to zoom, I'm not going to position or scale it or anything. I'm going to have it kind of reveal the picture. So crop is kind of different. So I'm going to I'm going to tuck in the left crop. Ooh. And it sometimes likes to go away. Sorry. I'm going to 
let's see. I'm gonna type it in so I know where I'm at. Nope. I want to type. I want to crop in the right to 100% crop, and then I'm gonna crop the bottom to 100%. And on the bear, I'm gonna do the opposite. But I'll, I'll do the scientist first or the science student first, right? And then about right about here is where I want it to be fully revealed. So then I'm gonna I've hit the stopwatch for right and bottom when I was back on my keyframe over here. And now I'm going to type in zero and zero. And notice it becomes two sets of keyframes. And so what happens is, is it pulls down from the corner and kind of reveals himself. I'm going to do the opposite from the bear. So while the science student was right and bottom, the bear is going to be left and top. And so I'm going to do the same thing for the bear, which is going to be, I'm going to use the stopwatch for left and top, and I'm going to pull them down to 100%. Pull this one down to 100%. And now right over here, I'm going to type 0 and 0. So now they both kind of move diagonally and kind of reveal themselves as pride wipes itself out. And then at the very end, I'm going to have it go in the opposite direction. Now, remember the problem we had with rotation. I have to set a keyframe right here without doing anything. So I'm setting a, sta a static keyframe to say, like, from this point to this point, I want it to do nothing. So I'm going to hit. And actually, I'm going to do it for the other side. So now I'm going to activate a keyframe for right and bottom. But I'm not going to make any changes. And then I'm going to go all the way down here to the end of the frame the end of the clip, excuse me, and I'm going to increase bottom to 100% and increase the right corner to 100%. Then I'm going to do the same thing with my science student and I'm going to, somewhere right about there, I'm going to do the opposite for him. So I'm going to hit the stopwatch for top and left and I'm not making any changes because I don't want the change to happen yet. Move my scrubber down and I increase the left to 100%, and you see it start to go away, and the top part to 100%, and you see it to go dip away. And now, it doesn't, it, so now they reveal in, and we can't see it because it's yellow. So we're gonna go up top to sequence, we're gonna choose render in and out, and we're gonna let it render for a second. This one's going much faster because it's already, already rendered. And two minutes. Boom. And now if I click over here, we can see it. Pride slides through, and then I reveal my two students. Now, the last thing you want to do is you want to add a transition to every single picture so they kind of fade in and out, and we need to add a song. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything. And instead of just trying to do deal with opacity, I can easily choose um, a way to add all video transitions. If I go to sequence and I hit apply video transition, or I choose command D, they all of a sudden all get a crossfade. And that crossfade just makes it look a little nicer as it's switching between each different picture. So that crossfade kind of helps it fade in. Lastly, you want to go back to your folder and you want to pick a song. They're both very cheesy. I'm going to drag that song into my audio track at the very beginning. And then you want to make sure you cut off that audio track um, before it's done. So you're going to hit the blade tool. You're going to cut it. And again, you can hold Command D to have a little crossfade so they, they fall out. But now you have this nice little slideshow with some background music. And if you wanted to include a voiceover or anything. So these pictures and images, um, these are what you're going to be using to use for B-roll when you don't have any other video. And keyframing them really kind of helps it. And we're going to be doing other stuff with keyframing later. All right, when you're all done, you're going to hit File. Oh, let's just look at the crop. We didn't look at the crop. So now I'm going to go to File. I'm going to choose Export. I'm going to choose Media. And you're going to call it one underscore, excuse me, two underscore photo demo. 
And you're going to put your last name and you're going to turn it into the submit folder. Hit save, hit export, and you're done.